Get hurt. Time out. This doctor, by the fucking way, you know who he reminds me of? Who? Huh. Harold Shipman. Harold Frederick Shipman. Known as Fred. He didn't go by Harold. He went just by Fred. Fred? Oh, yeah. well, middle name was yeah, Frederick? His, Fred. Yeah, his, his middle name was Frederick. He went by Fred. Fred. Yeah. All right. Um, you know, born into a working class family in Nottingham, England. Nottingham. 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 In January of nineteen forty six, so you know, a World War II celebratory baby. Like the war's over, uh, let's have babies. Mm-hmm. Let's do this. <laughs> we know what to do with these two things. And um he was the favorite child of his mother Vera. Uh-huh. And she instilled in him a sense of superiority. So it kind of fucked him up for life with that. Um, so, therefore, he thought he was better than everybody and didn't really make a lot of friends. Um, unfortunately, his only friend, his mom, uh, died of lung cancer when she was only 43 years old. Damn. So, the thing that really screwed him up was that as she was dying, he was, like, fascinated by the doctor administering um, morphine to, like, take away the pain from his mom. And he just kind of got obsessed with that whole process. I can see now he's like, what is that that you're putting in it? Uh, really seems to knock her out. The doctor just turns around and goes, oh, this is morphine. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> morphine's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, Good yeah. stuff. He like Good squirts stuff. a little in his Makes mouth from great. the syringe. <laughs> yeah. He's like, can I try something? He goes, no, you're not a doctor. <laughs> and he's like, well, I'll be a doctor. Oh, come here, kid. Give yeah. me a little try. Yeah, i like to see you try. <laughs> Old, old Freddy, old Freddy Shipman. Old Freddy Shipman. Old Freddy Shipman. He married his uh, wife, Primrose. That was her name. Oh, that is a beautiful name. He was Primrose. 19. She was 17 oh. uh, because she was pregnant with their child. Oh. And by 1974, he was a father of two. And he had gone to school and he had joined a medical practice in Yorkshire. And, you know, he was just a family practitioner. Normal doing, life. Yeah, doing, just doing doctor things, right. living life. And then he got addicted to pethidine, which is Demerol, which is a narcotic. I'm allergic to it. Are you? Yeah, I'm allergic I, to Demerol. Some people are. Oh, it's yeah. the best. I think Demerol is like... I have no idea. It's a different kind of pain drug and it they just kind of makes all, yeah it just makes you, the entire body just he was addicted to that Jesus. so he was into that stuff smooth living um Ugh. and unfortunately when people found out that he was addicted to that they were like he, he, dude you got to get out of here so he was forced to leave a particular practice um but you know no one tells anybody anything within amongst other practices Evidently. so <laughs> what was that so what was that what was that first job he had again um he was just a he was in a medical practice in like Yorkshire it was like family practice, and then he got addicted to mm-hmm. the Demerol, and they were like, y- "You gotta go, man!" In nineteen seventy-five, you're on the Demerol, kid. <laughs> he did a little bit of rehab. He paid a small fine, so he also was like convicted for like forgery of the prescription. You know, petty. Everything's fine. Nothing, nothing bad yet. <laughs> um, for other people. Then he was a medical officer in Durham, and then he was in the Donnybrook Medical Center in Hyde in nineteen seventy-seven. He was, everyone thought he was just hardworking and trustworthy. Um, doctors and and patients and colleagues, everybody, they're like, we love him. But he did have a little bit of a reputation of arrogance. But at the same time, he An didn't An arrogant really, doctor, you he know was, Yeah, no. right? I know. Wait. I know everything. The God complex. Yep. But during all this time, still, no one was suspicious of anything. Nothing was really any red flags. Um, he did like 15 years of his career here and at Donnybrook at Donnybrook Medical Center yeah Donnybrook and um and then after those 15 years he set up his own one man practice in 1992 so he was doing his normal things attended his patients he was a well known figure he was actually concealing horrific poisoning one day the local undertaker noticed hmm a lot of Dr. Shipman's patients seem to be dying at an unusually high rate. I can imagine that local undertaker going, hmm. dude, on a Tuesday, Another, come on. yeah. Another Dr. Shipman. Shipman, Shipman right. I'm eating lunch. Yeah. Another, Fred. Another. <laughs> Take it easy. Listen, dead, drop dead Fred. Come on, man. He's like, oh, Yo, I don't do on. this when you're eating lunch. So this undertaker eating his sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, 
like a Philly cheese. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> it'd be oh, like a man, Donnie Brook cheese. This yeah. roast beef sandwich is delicious. <laughs> Cursing. Strangely enough, all these Doctor Shipman bodies <laughs> yeah. are kind of found the same way. So most were fully clothed, and usually sitting up or reclining on a couch. And this undertaker, he approached Shipman. He's like, "Hey, man." This is all a little fishy. What's with all the dead bodies? Yeah, he's like, what's Dude. going on? And Shipman's like, Dude. yeah, <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, yeah you went some. You're a doctor. I'm a doctor. Shut you up. Some, you lose some. You're an undertaker. I'm a doctor. <laughs> Hush your mouth. Stay in your lane. Yeah, stay in your lane, buddy. How the hell should I know? They're dead. You know They're... more about them now than I do. <laughs> Ask them. You have a better relationship <laughs> than I do. You you it's, talked to them last. It's a real fine line between who's the expert on this yeah. body. It's like, <laughs> You, Two or five or six seconds later, it's like it's yours, man. I'm sorry, I was there. Technically, you were the last person seen with them, <laughs> oh, so I don't know what to tell you. Definitely more like into the your field at this point. There's nothing bureaucracy. I can do. Hospital bureaucracy, exactly. You pass the buck. Like, sign him off, dude. I don't care. <laughs> not my problem. Nope. Got other things going on. Going to get a Philly cheese. He, he not just my circus, around. not my monkey. He's not allowed to yeah. say. He turns around and goes, <laughs> nope. Just wash my hands of this. Called it. And there's another colleague he had, Dr. Susan Booth. She also thought it was odd. And um, the local coroner's office was alerted, and they contacted the police. An investigation was made, but everything seemed in order. Um, They did not contact the General Medical Council or check the criminal records, which would have yielded evidence of Shipman's previous records. So that's the problem with the health industry, apparently, is no one... Checks communicate with anyone. No, they don't talk to anybody. It's all because of licensing it, and insurance. Yep. This like it's that it's a it's a weird it's a weird industry. No one wants to like like. And how many deaths get to the point where it's going to raise an eyebrow because right. people are dying in hospitals? But it's like, oh, Bob's had like five in the last hour. Can we check on him? Can right. we, can we red flag this guy. Right. So no one really talks to one another no one realizes there's any shady things going on which is scary as hell that's what yeah. I'm saying it's really freaky I feel like people do but like they don't talk about it because they get suicided so be cool chill chill chill, chill. Yeah. Yeah. Just Dude. chill. I'm so well, we sorry in bed so. Dr. Shipman though I mean one of the things that kind of helped him is like he was seen to most as like a very caring family doctor really good bedside manner really nice person um, but anytime anyone questioned anything, he was just like, he just denied it all, obviously. Um, so no one could really catch him what, until, me, un- me, no, not me. Un- Come on. Un- <laughs> till, Come on. right. He's like, no, what? I am so Freddy nice. Freddie Shipman. I'm so nice. Boy. Freddy. Everyone Freddy. dies peacefully with morphine. He let a patient die. That patient's daughter happened to be a lawyer. Oh boy. And her name was Angela. Hey. Oh boy. Angela Woodruff. So it could be an Angela. Yeah. Angela's a badass, apparently. And they're like, hell no. And, um. <laughs> 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 this Angela was like, my, no. my mom was this perfectly healthy person. Why did she die? And her name was Kathleen Grundy. She was. An- Whoa, Grundy. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Grundy. <laughs> She was an active, wealthy, 81-year-old widow, and she was found dead in her home in June 24th, 1998, following an earlier visit by Shipman, by Dr. Shipman. Oh, he did like a house call. Yep, he did. When you want to die, you just don't want to leave the house. Right. So Woodruff, <laughs> Angela Woodruff, um, she was advised by Dr. Shipman that an autopsy, it's not required. She was in, you know, she was buried and, you know, like hours later. Yeah, just like, like that. She's, don't do an autopsy. She just died. Yeah. She's, she's 81. 80. She yeah. just died. Oh, my God. I'm going to do my job, yeah. Shipman. Woodruff was like, she's a lawyer. She's too smart for that. She'd always handled her mom's affairs and something seemed a little off with all this. And all of a sudden, weirdly enough, that a lot of the estate of Kathleen Grundy was for Dr. Shipman. Weirdly enough. In, uh, in, the, will. in the will. In the will. Oh, that's, look at me. Oh, how weird. Uh, that's not unlike H.H. H. Holmes, who would also take out large life uh, insurance settlements with on, the his, murder on, hotel. on his victims. Yeah. yeah. So she was like, I, this is a doctor. Why Lucrative, the hell would my mom right. like leave her estate to this guy? So she started looking into it, and she was like, that's obviously forgery. And I'm convinced that this guy, like, murdered my freaking mom. So she alerted the police, 
and they were like, yeah, this seems this seems a little sketchy. <laughs> um, so they exhumed Kathleen Grundy's body. <laughs> that grave digger was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. I just... <laughs> I gotta take her right I, back. I, I, this I motherfucker's just, doubling up I on me now. I just buried her. Oh. Are you serious? Oh, Shipman! <laughs> <laughs> we talked what about the- this, Shipman! <laughs> Shipman! Shipman! Oh. Selfishly, I was hoping it was going there. That fucking... It's definitely got to be like a weird dynamic between the local serial killer and the Undertaker, oh where he's just God. noticing God. this like, come on, guy. Last shovel of dirt on Kathleen Grundy's body, and they're like, ah, dig her back up. We got to look at her. And back. So the postmortem revealed she had died of a morphine overdose. Oh, uh-huh. oopsies. And it was administered within three hours of her death. It goes right back to that first childhood memory. They were like, all right, we're going to raid your home, shipmen. They found medical records, an odd collection of jewelry, oh, an old oh, typewriter, no. which was the same one that Grundy's forged will was typed on. Oh, uh, that's Jeez, so damn. easy forensically back yeah. in the day with typewriters. Cause they're so easy to look at the right. typeface itself and right. say, okay, there's where the so, two look weird. Obviously, like to the police, medical records that were seized, there are more cases than this. Um, they started to investigate victims who had not been cremated. So a lot of them had been cremated because oh. Shipman was always like, cremate them, cremate <laughs> them, go, go, burn go. the bodies, cremate them. It's fine. Everything's fine. He provided computerized medical records and they realized that he would alter the medical records after the patient had been killed. And they figured that out because they would be time stamped by him. So they would die and then they'd see afterwards he'd go in and alter things and they could see when he went in and fixed things it was after the, yeah so they would see the timestamp um they would exhume all these bodies and all these autopsies they realized that they charged shipman with 15 individual counts of murder on mm. September 7th of 1998 and one one count of forgery um and that will really stick <laughs> And the, the prosec- can't beat that one. I know. The prosecution asserted that Shipman had killed the 15 patients because he just enjoyed exercising control over life and death. Oh my God! Yeah, that's a psychopath. That's a good guy to and be a doctor. Dismissed. What did I say? Any claims that he had been acting compassionately. This was just because he wanted to. Just funsies. Yeah. And then Angela Woodruff. Uh, she appeared as first witness. She was a lawyer, so. Any attempts by Shipman's defense were like pitiful. Like she just she roasted him. Roasted this nice. guy. Like oh. his defense were basically like, yeah, he did yeah it. we we have this murderous <laughs> piece of shit. I can, I can so. <laughs> paint it into a corner, and she's yeah. just like just <clears throat> going off on them. Yeah. So and also the government pathologist, they went through all those like disgusting postmortem findings where morphine toxicity was the cause of death in most instances. So he just OD'd everybody on morphine. Yeah, he had a he calling card. And this was just from so, the bodies that they could do. Right. So like, he had watched his mother die from this doctor. Like, I mean, she had lung cancer. Right. And this doctor's doing this, obviously, compassionately to help her pass. Which is kind of weird. I don't feel like that's allowed. Anyway, this doctor... In the was, 70s, probably. Who, who the hell knows? And they also did a fingerprint analysis of the forged will that Kathleen Grunny had never touched it, obviously. So all um, that was dismissed. That's kind of bogus. Like the whole, like, was she, did they find out about any other like forgeries or was that the only one? That was the only one okay. that they they had, they had discovered. He just decided to snap and get, get some old ladies money. Yeah. He had actually altered a lot of computer records had that created symptoms um, that his dead patients just never had. And he just would create them. Seems like that's way within too much like work. hours of their death. So he'd be like, "Oh, you have this," and then just like give them a bunch of morphine, and then they die. <laughs> yeah, broken toe, morphine. So shipment no. I mean, I think I can go back to okay. <laughs> nice dreams. Even though this guy was obviously the common denominator in all these killings, he denied all these accusations against him. Um, but why everyone, wouldn't you? Right, but everyone's best guess was that obviously the motive behind all this stuff was that he had a god complex. You know, kill or cure. And this is the whole power thing he had. So he was called the Angel of Death or Dr. Death. And he was thought to have killed at least 218 patients. Holy ball nuts! What? And that death toll, this is familiar from earlier, 80% 
for elderly women. Yep. Oh, no. The most able-bodied of the women. And actually, investigators, like, and that was all, like, what they could really specifically get, but they think that the real total could be, like, over or close to 250 instead of just 218. That is- that's insane. So, yeah, that's like so a pole many pot. people. That's like a like yeah. uh, dictator, dictatorial death number, but it, for a medical practitioner yeah. or a medical care in the nineties. In the nineties, yeah, in the nineties, not in like the you know fifties or no, it was the nineties. Wow. He was so he's been known as one of the most prolific serial killers in the world. And he was in the Durham prison throughout all these investigations, um, and then moved to Wakefield Prison in June two thousand three. Um, his family visited him often. His wife refused to believe he was guilty. Mm-hmm. They were married when she was like 17. Like she was just in that oh, veil. Gaslit. Just like, yeah, gaslit for her entire life. It's I'm called sure love, man, daddy. Both are the she same. Or die. And then on January 13th of 2004, Shipman hanged himself from his own sheets in the window bars of his cell. Dr. Shipman. The story of Shipman. He's a piece of shit. Yeah, I mean, Death is always worse. sad, though. So it's that's what happens when terrible things happen to you and you don't go to therapy. Yeah. <laughs> that's what happens. Oh, oh my God! God. Oh, what did they Damn. do?